Hi guys, it's Joe here from Rufio. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, welcome aboard. You should definitely hit subscribe and the notification bell before you realize how fucking garbage this content is. And if this is not your first time on the channel, welcome back, you absolute fucking loser. You should probably find something better to do with your time. In all seriousness, no, thank you very much for coming along. I do appreciate you being here. Today's video, we are revisiting one of my all time favorite decks to mess around with, Dino Dolls. Yes, that's right, two of my favourite things, and two things you can more or less exclusively pick up from Structure Decks, Dinosaurs and Shadows. The beauty of Dino Dolls is that a lot of the more expensive staples, you can actually omit them from the deck altogether, and it'll run absolutely fine. But if you do have access to some of those better cards, you have options that you can certainly use to make the deck better. It's an incredibly explosive deck. It is far better at going first than it used to be, uh, although primarily you're going to usually choose to go second with the deck, uh, kind of as a standard. The deck is much better going up first than it used to be, although largely people will choose to go second with the deck due to the nature of Shadow Fusion of itself. And of course, Dinos being Dinos, going second is just, you know, a free win. So combining the two together makes for a nice potent deck and one that I particularly enjoy playing. So that is the aim of today's deck profile, is the build that I've been using online, the build that I've been messing around with, and hopefully you guys will enjoy using it as much as I have. If you are watching this video and you're feeling inspired to pick up some singles, you should check out the channel sponsors Jam Jam Cards UK. There is a link in the description to their eBay store and you'll get yourself a cheeky discount courtesy of yours truly. And it's worth noting that they don't just do Yu-Gi-Oh singles, they do Pokemon as well. But anyway, that's enough waffling on from me. Let's get stuck in to the deck profile. Okay, so here it is guys, the garbage that you've all been waiting for. Before we do get started, let me first apologise if there are any weird noises in the background. That could possibly be my laptop going absolutely fucking ham. It sounds like a jet engine taking off, and if it is, that's exactly what the cause of the sound is. Hopefully, though, we can edit that all out so it sounds nice and smooth and professional for you, because anything about this channel is professional. So today's deck, very much as one aim in mind, it is go second and obliterate the opponent. Now, for the most part, this is a super budget-friendly deck. Honestly, there's not many cards in here that are particularly expensive, which is one of the beauties of the deck. Now, I have made some bits and bobs that I put into the side deck there. They're, of course, not intended to be side deck cards. They are there for options that you could consider if you have a bit more of a budget and you want something better to be able to play. Now, Dino Dolls was one of the first decks I played when I came back to the game back at the tail end of 2017, and so, of course, I've absolutely loved playing it ever since. So it is one of those decks that I come back to every single format, make a mess around with, much like Light Swarm, much like Burning Abyss. If you're into any of these decks at all, definitely stick around on the channel. You'll see plenty of profiles for them come up each and every format. They're not always going to be super competitive, but they will give you some idea of things that you might want to try out for at least a little bit of fun. Anyway though, I digress, I'm definitely just taking up more time in this video than I need to, so let's get stuck in. Just two copies of Ultima Conductor Tyranno in here, honestly a third is just never necessary, way too bricky, especially not being a pure deck. Of course you're going to want to summon this off Evo Pill where possible, but if you do see it in your hand you've got enough dinos to be able to banish to and go about your business. But honestly you don't want to be found in a situation where you don't have enough dinos to be able to play properly and get this out of your hand. It is a one card winning machine, honestly this smashes through so many people that just aren't ready for it. So two works perfectly in my opinion. We have a single copy of Coatlas in here. A lot of decks opt not to run it, but given this is a budget variant and we're cutting some of the other cards that we would normally run, it is another dinosaur, so of course makes it easier to make Conductor. If we are forced to go first, which is not preferable in this particular build, then we've got this as an option for a negate, and if nothing else, it becomes a bit of a beat stick and another target. Of course, it can just be sent off over to search for your pill as well, which without any Midorn Arcosaur in the main deck, this is a good option to have. We have a single copy of Dynarest the Pancratops. This card is absolutely fucking broken. I really wish it was still at three, but whilst it's at one, we're going to use it at one. Playing going second and not playing Pancratops is just plain fucking stupid, especially in a Dino deck. So one copy is exactly what we're running. Triple copies of Overaptor. Honestly, if this deck didn't have three available to it, it would be completely unplayable. I don't care what anyone says, you're not playing Dinos if you don't have three Overaptors. The most important card in the deck, in my personal opinion, it is the card that makes this whole deck 
go around. You need to see over after you need to see it as much as possible. So running three copies here on top of three copies of Fossil Dig as ways to get it out. And of course you can get it off one of the babies as well, but that's by the by. The whole point is though, you want to see this as much as possible. Run a single copy of Giant Rex again because it's a budget friendly option to have in here and it makes it easier to make rank 4s. Now you can max out on more rank 4s but we'll get to all of that a little bit further down the line but Giant Rex is an integral part of that. The downside to Giant Rex is that obviously not being able to attack directly kind of sucks but it does everything else that you possibly need and it's free material on board which is only ever a good thing in this game. Triple copies of Miscellaneousaurus, this card is absolutely fucking bonkers. Have you read Miscellaneousaurus? Honestly, triple copies, absolutely mandatory to play, unless you're me, in which case you play two, but we won't go down that route again. Three copies is absolutely perfect. Two copies of Baby Cerasaurus, I think two is perfectly fine, and a single copy of Petit Tyrannodon. Honestly, they're easy enough to just get out and easy enough to abuse and pop some stuff, but I think that the three, the two, and the one works perfectly fine. We have Duracaolo in here, of course, easy enough to get out. It's a free body to get on board. That's really all we're using it for in here. It's a free banish and miss, get a body on board and go off from there. That's all it really does in here again because we're not running a synchro package per se. So, of course, that's all you're really getting out of it. But honestly, I think at one, it's a great option to have in here for a free body on board. And then we move on to our Chanel package. This is slightly different to what I'd normally play. It's probably about the same sort of size. Sometimes I like to run a little fewer. But honestly, I think that the new Chanel stuff is kind of nice. And as such, we want to run a little bit more of it. So we've got a single copy of Beast in here because, you know, drawing cards is nice. Single copy of Dragon. Popping back row is really cool. If you've seen the Ghost from the Past release video of course i managed to get hold of some boxes courtesy of konami i did a sponsor video by them i'll put a link on the screen so you guys can go ahead and check that out if you're interested but we had it confirmed that these two are in here so of course we're going to run them in this particular build hell should all have some really cool options here being able to send stuff from your opponent's side of the field and also the million effect is really cool again nothing too insane but a really nice option of course it can help you go into grista which honestly i think is highly undervalued and something people should be playing if they have the space but again we'll get to that in a moment genius of course being able to switch off your opponent's effects is really really nice so what's not to like about that we have a single copy of Wendy. It summons from Dex. So there's not much more to say about that. We have a single copy of Ariel. Again, this is just for, of course, Grave Control, which is always a nice option. Of course, being able to recycle resources is a good choice as well. And then onto our hand traps, the only ones we run in the deck. We're running triple copies of Ash Blossom and Joy Spring, triple copies of Gamma, and of course the lonely brick itself, Mr. Garnet himself, the driver. Um, honestly, I think these are the two most powerful ones that you could possibly include in the deck at this time, and the ones that we really have the space for. Uh, we're going second in this deck, and largely we're going to be ignorant of what our opponent does, because the intention here is to just Dark Ruler no more of them, and then just fucking splatter them, but this will hopefully mean that they don't get to build a particularly strong board in the first place so these two are the best options i think you really need to include in this deck and yeah they're pretty much self-explanatory in my opinion two copies of double evo pill again i don't think a third is ever necessary in these like unless you're playing some sort of pure dino build which again it'd be questionable as to whether you could even resolve this that many times i think two is perfect you really don't want to see it in your hand you want to be able to search with quietness as much as possible i didn't want just one though in case the first one gets stopped for any reason or you do happen to open one then you've got the ability to search the other instead Triple copies of Fossil Dig, whilst it's a three, we'll play it at three. It's card's fucking insane. It, it absolutely baffles me that this is still at three, but there you go. Because we're playing going second, of course, Harpy's Feather Dust are completely ignorant of our opponent. We are playing against a lot of decks that are back row heavy, particularly the likes of Eldritch and so on. This being able to wipe out all the back row is handy. Of course, it's not absolutely insane against all those decks because a lot of them have graveyard effects as well, but it might be enough to get you over the line and wipe out your opponent. We have triple copies of Dark Ruler No More. This is again just so we can be absolutely ignorant of our opponent and just try and splatter them as quickly as possible. If you see this with Feather Duster in your hand going second, you are in a really good spot. Triple copies of Shadow Fusion again because we plan to go second. Maxing out on these is really important, being able to send stuff from the deck. As we're running a slightly bigger package than usual with our Shadows, I think El Shadow Fusion is a much better option in here. Being able to go through multiples in battle phases, doing during your opponent's turn, switching into Winder, all of that good stuff. I think it's a really strong option, and running two copies is absolutely awesome. A single copy of Call by the Grave, it's at one, so we're only running one. This can be quite susceptible to hand traps, so we want a way to play through that. And of course, it's a really good defensive or offensive card, depending on what you need at any given time. It's actually really good going first or second, so it gives you plenty of options. 
And finally, we finish on a single copy of Schism. Uh, again, usually better when going first, but if you do get into those slightly grindier games, this can be a really good option to have available to you. And honestly, I think to not play it in this deck would be absolutely silly. We then move on to our extra deck. Again, some of these are just personal preference in here. A lot of this is actually uh, a little bit more malleable and you can adjust it to what you need. But again, keep in mind that the intention here is to keep most of this relatively budget friendly. So you've got a single copy of Grister in here. Honestly, I think this is highly undervalued. It's a really good way to get Misk into the grave if you want to do that to be able to banish and get Aeolo onto the field. You can use it to send your Hellshadow now as well. Uh, you can use it to send Ash Blossom if you really just need an option to get something into grave. But that can also help set up your pill as well. So just keep those kind of things in mind that this can be a really valuable way to get some really good stuff into the grave and of course the actual effect comes up quite well as well given that we're running a bigger shadow package it's way more valuable than it would be under normal circumstances Running this single copy of Shek and Arga for much the same reasons as Grist, they're not quite a strong an option, but again, being able to dump Giant Rex is not a bad option, being able to dump Genius is not a bad option, so just keep those kind of things in mind as possibilities. We've got a single copy of App Cologne in here, again, App Cologne, it does what it does, I don't really need to go into that. Much the same with two copies of Window, I think is perfect, you'll never really need the third. And a single copy of Construct, I would like to run more than this on occasion, but honestly, I think one is fine for the most part. We then move on to our rank fours. We've got Abyss Dweller, Baguska, and Evolzar Dolka. So for me, these three are kind of the best of the bunch that you could want to run. Uh, for me, Abyss Dweller is probably the strongest rank four in the game. Baguska is a really good option if you find yourself going first and you've kind of bricked a little bit. If you can at least get to rank four, Baguska can buy you a couple of turns, which is normally enough in this deck to see exactly what you need to just kill off your opponent. Some decks really just don't have a way to out this card and they just have to put up with it for a few turns and that can be really advantageous. And then of course Dalka is Dalka, I really don't need to elaborate on that. If you do want to run some other options, of course you've got Lagia, you've got Exiton Knight, you've got Tornado Dragon, you've got so many options with rank 4s, it's absolutely unreal. It's really just down to personal preference, but I think these three are perfect for myself. We then move on to our links here. So we've got a single copy of IP Mascarena. It's IP Mascarena. We've got two utility cards here in Phoenix and Unicorn, of course, for interrupting our opponent. A single copy of Appaloosa because it's probably the best link for in the game at the moment. And we have a single copy of Cross Sheep because we're running fusion cards. So what's not to like about that? And a single copy of Omega. We're running the package for it. So that's always a good option to have available. We then move on to the cards that are popped into the side deck here. So, of course, we've got Super Polymerization, an option that you could definitely run at least in the side if you really wanted to. It's a really strong option. I just didn't feel I had the space in here for it. We have a single copy of Lambda. This is less budget friendly, which is why it's in this side bit instead. But again, a card that you could absolutely run if you have the money to get into it. And of course, that'll make your Gamma and your Driver a much better option in this deck. Running a single copy of Vert Anaconda, again another really strong option, but again it is usually a bit more budget restricted. Of course if you want to run this, and particularly if you're running the Super Poly variant as well, this can be an incredibly strong option, so one you should definitely consider. And of course it goes without saying, if you have access to Animador Narcosaur, you should absolutely be running the Bubble Croc himself. And that my friends is all for today's video. Once again, hopefully this has given you some idea of what you might like to do with your own builds, something that you can work from. Again, not super tried and tested, but here to give you some ideas of how you could make your own builds. If you're one of the lucky losers who's made it this far into the video, hopefully you've enjoyed it enough that you'll have hit subscribe, or at least hate it enough that you couldn't possibly look away. In either of those scenarios, though, thank you very much for coming along. I do appreciate you being here. It's worth noting that deck profiles aren't the only thing that we do on the channel. We do how to play videos, combo tutorials, locals vlogs when they're back on, other event vlogs when they're back on, and all of the other good stuff you can expect from any YouTuber. And if you're watching this and you think it isn't enough of me to part with, you should check out all my other social media links down in the description. But anyway, that's enough waffling on from me. I'll see you in the next one. This content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description.